Hello and welcome. Recently, I read about the new Tails release 4.20, the portable Amnesiac Linux distribution, and was going to do a review video. But then I thought, why not show the basics of Tor on Arch Linux instead? I mean, we generally build our Arch systems from scratch, so we tend to trust them more than a third-party vendor. Let's get started. Tor, or the onion routing, provides access to anonymous proxy networks wrapped in layers like an onion while encrypting your traffic. Tor is a complex subject, and I encourage you to read all about it in the Arch Wiki. In the scope of this basic tutorial, I will set up the Tor service and configure the control port and the control socket for enabling non-Tor aware applications to use Tor. Let's open a terminal. Let's do a NeoFetch. As you can see, we're running a budgie desktop, Arch installation. Let's make sure we're up to date with sudo pacman-syu and let that happen. And then let's do a sudo pacman-s install Tor and Nix, the uh, Tor utility program. All right, let's clear the screen. Let's do sudo systemctl start tor and check to make sure the tor service has been successfully launched, and it has. Let's clear the screen and let's set up the control port by editing etsy tor tor rc. And let's scroll down to the control port section. Let's uncomment that. And also cookie authentication. And let's add cookie auth file slash var slash lib slash tor slash control underscore auth underscore cookie and hit enter. And let's add cookie, auth file, group, readable, one, and also data directory, group, readable, one. And check for typing errors. Looks good. So let's write it out. Let's add ourselves to the group Tor. We're a non, of course. We'll do a new group Tor. Make sure that's there. So let's restart Tor. And let's check the permissions using the octal format. So dash C percent A var lib tor and var lib tor control underscore auth underscore cookie and we've got permissions 750 and 640 respectively that looks good so let's turn off history because we're going to set ourselves a password and we'll do tor dash dash hash dash password sum underscore pass that's the password I've chosen. And there it is. Let's copy the hash result. And let's turn on history again with set-o history. Let's clear the screen. Let's stop the Tor service because we want to edit the Tor RC file and set up the control socket with our new hash. So we'll add hashed 
control, password, and then we'll paste our generated hash that we copied before. And we'll add control socket will be var lib tor control underscore socket. And then control sockets, plural, group writable one. And we'll also enable cache directory group readable one. We'll check for typing mistakes. Looks good. Okay. So let's restart the Tor service. Clear the screen. And we'll do a stat dash C percent A for the octal permissions for var lib tor control socket. And 660 permission is what we want. So let's install, if we haven't already, uh, GNU dash netcat and socat for socket cat. And I'll go ahead and install that. And let's test the control port by typing echo dash e single quote protocol info backslash r backslash n single quote. And we'll pipe it to netcat or nc localhost, which is 127.0.0.1. And the port is 9051. And looks like it's listening. So let's test the control socket by typing echo dash e single quote uh, protocol info backslash r backslash n single quote. We'll pipe it to sudo user will be anon and socat dash unix dash client colon var lib tor control underscore socket and hit enter and it's working as well wonderful let's install firefox by typing sudo pacman dash s firefox and let it install Let's launch Firefox by typing Firefox. Okay, let's control that extra tab. Let's go into settings, general, scroll all the way to the bottom to network settings. And uh, let's do the manual proxy configuration. The SOX host will be localhost because we have the Tor service running, right? And listening. And the port should be 9050. SOX version five is the protocol that we need. We'll also like to channel DNS through SOX version five uh, through Tor. So we'll click OK on that. And let's test to see if Tor is configured properly by going to https colon slash slash check.torproject.org and let it load. And it looks like a browser is configured to use Tor correctly. And we've got some random IP address. Well, not truly random, but you know what I mean not our uh, true IP address. So next let's sudo pacman dash s. Let's install a uh, Tor browser launcher. So that's a pre-configured uh, Firefox, I believe, uh, browser. 
It's been pre-configured for Tor. It doesn't rely on the Tor service. So that's installed. And um, let's launch it by typing Tor Browser dash launcher. So the launcher downloads Tor Browser for the first time and installs it. So let's launch it. And here we are. Let's connect to Tor. Okay. Looks like we are connected, but let's double check. Trust nothing or trust but verify. Going to check.torproject.org and verify. Ah, uh, yes, we have a different IP address now and it's configured properly. So that works as well. So uh, we also installed Nix, which is a great Tor management utility and monitoring utility. And uh, it runs in the terminal or the command line. Make it a little bigger. So it you can give your bandwidth gap, uh, Connections, configurations, uh, events, whole bunch of things it can do for you. So we don't have time to really go through this uh, in detail, but uh, let's type Nix and launch it. And there it's running. So yeah. Looks like everything's configured properly. Tor is a complex topic, and I again encourage you to explore further. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to help this channel grow.